Here we are in a different scene. This one's pretty simple. It's just a skeleton, skeleton mirror, and a pack folder with uh, the base skill all set up. So why don't I throw down an auto rig component just to initialize our rig. I'll use the FK transform. I'll press enter. And now we have some controls to work with. So let's go into the controls, right? Into the controls tab, and I'm gonna promote the R and T channels so I can move these around as well. Okay. And again, I'm hitting N to reset everything. And that's just a little bit faster than Control Z. All right, so let's talk about the graph fuse. So what is the graph fuse? Well, the graph fuse is a new auto rig component, right? So it's within the auto rig component node. And if you go up to the component source, you can go down and then here's fuse graph. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But before we really get into this, let's let's start actually building something that we can fuse into our current rig. So uh, I'm going to exit the state. I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to hit alt right bracket. I'm going to go to uh, the apex network view, where we can see our rig, this is our current rig, right, we can see that uh, all of the controls are named correctly. And everything is being promoted as it should. So I'm going to press alt left bracket to split these into two views. And I'm actually going to pin this so that we can see what's happening in our rig as we work over here. So let's put down an apex graph, we're going to plug our rig directly into the graph. And then this goes into the second input of the auto rig component. So we'll call this fuse graph. Let's jump back to the apex graph, and I'm going to pin this as well. Okay, so that we can jump down here and we can open up the the graph as it's being built. I'm going to press L to kind of get everything looking nice and tidy. And I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can kind of see what, what we're doing. So okay, let's go ahead and just get started. Let's throw something into our scene. So if I put down a transform object, we can see that it's just being built. There's our new transform object. We can say new control. And then we have new control. But we still can't see it, right? We can't see it in the scene. So if I take the T channel and just put this into next. So if I put down a transform object, okay, we can see that the actual transform object is being created in our graph. Now we see that we actually have this template tag, right? So everything that's going into our graph is getting this template tag. So if I delete that, we see that we remove that tag. And we have the tag again. So essentially, what that is, is uh, we're basically just tagging everything that's being fused into the graph. Now, if I wanted to choose a specific thing not to fuse into the graph, I can turn on the prune fuse graph, and I can be very specific about what I don't want. So if I call this say new control, if I go up here and say new control, we can prune that specific thing, right? So we don't, so we could just kind of selectively and surgically choose what we want to actually put into our rig graph. So let's get rid of this, turn that off. Okay, so now we have this new control. Now I actually want to see it, right? So let's take the T channel. And let's put it into here. And if I hover over the viewport and press N, it updates. And now I can see my new control. And here it is, new control. So let's explore the mirror option a little bit. So if I create this new control and call it L new control, press N, what that does is it actually creates a mirror copy of this control. So if I jump into here, we can see now that we have an L new control and an R new control. Okay. 
Now, if I try to move this L new control, we can see that the R is moving as well. And that's because both of these nodes are sharing the same input, right? Because I never renamed this T channel. So if I go into here and go to this T and call this L new control T, I now have the L new control and the R new control. So now I can go in and separately move these. What's nice about the fuse graph approach is that we don't need all of these nodes here, right? So we can just go in and delete them all. And let's put in a new transform object. And let's call this L shoulder parent, right? Because we want to create a parent for the shoulder control. And of course, we create the two shoulder parents, right? The L and the R, which is nice. But we just deleted our parms, right? So we need a new input node. So if I make a new input node and just promote this, I'll hover over the viewport and press N. Okay, so now we have this. But the problem is, is that we have these two parm uh, nodes here, and we don't want that. So what I can do is just name this parms, and it'll just update the actual parms node, which is very nice. So we need to update this name again so we can actually have access to both of these controls. So I'll select this, middle click the actual T there, and just update this name. And now we have the L and the R shoulder parent. It's great. Press N again. Awesome. So I actually want this shoulder parent to be at this specific point, right? Because if I were to, let's, let's just take this and I'm going to and reproduce the name of our shoulder, our L shoulder over here. Now I can actually make changes in terms of, I can actually parent this to this L shoulder, right? So if I parented that and were to move that around, I can actually move the shoulder around now. Okay, but I want my shoulder parent to sit right on top of the shoulder. I kind of want like another controller to originate from where the shoulder is. So I need the rest local for this shoulder. So a great way to get the local of a, of a uh, joint, the rest local of a joint, is to throw down a value matrix, value matrix four, actually copy the name of the joint you're looking for, and double underscore capital rest. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this little uh, string here is that what this will do, what the fuse graph does is it looks for these matrix nodes, sees this first part of the string, and then goes through the graph and looks for that corresponding node, and then grabs the rest local, and then plugs it in wherever you need it, right? So in this case, I'm going to plug it into this rest local. So I'm going to plug that in, press N, and you can see everything just got kind of twisted up. Now, that's because this L shoulder already has a rest local, right? It had a rest position, but now it's being affected by this new shoulder parent, right? So you can see, like, everything works. It's just that it now inherited this position, whereas before it already had its own original position. So what we need to do is actually zero out the L shoulders rest local. So I'm going to put down another matrix value. I'm going to call this L shoulder null position. And I'm just going to plug that into the rest local. Press N. And now if I select the L shoulder, that works and the R shoulder, that works. And I still have access to the, the children, which is pretty nice. So while we're here, why don't we plug in the local X form to the parent local as well. And so everything is ready to go. Now we have these two controls sitting on top of each other, right? So it'd be nice if we can actually change the shape 
of the parent control, which we can do. So I'm going to put down a rig control shape. And again, let's get everything back to where it was. And we can also press uh, this button here, this reset anim, if everything is kind of popping back to where it originally was. This kind of resets everything. So we now have this rig control shape. I'm going to, what it's looking for is the actual X form of the control. So I'm going to plug in the X form and let's make this a torus. Okay. Press N. And now we, the, the parent control is a torus. Now the problem here is that it's not doing it to both. And that's because we did not set up our, our uh, correct naming scheme. So we'll call this L parent shape. And now everything is correct. So you can actually uh, make a transform build. Okay, and I'm gonna put this here. And we can we can set uh, a shape offset, right? So we can actually create sort of a shape offset and do several different things here to perhaps make our shape more easy to select. So let's rotate this. Is this going to be 90 degrees? Uh, no, it's not 90 degrees here. Let me try the Z. I always have trouble doing this part. There we go. Okay, great. So now we have this. And I want the rotation as well. So I can just plug in the rotation. I'm going to copy this. So I, I think you're starting to get the idea here. Cool. So now we got this. This is looking fantastic reset everything. So this workflow isn't just limited to simple parenting and creating new controls. Uh, you can also do complex matrix calculations as well. So I mean, in, in, in this example, let's just put down a, a blend transform, right? And what I want to do is I want to make a mid arm control that just blends between the shoulder and the elbow. So we're going to need our elbow transform. So let's just drag that out. And I'm going to call that elbow. So now we have direct access to that elbow transform object. I'm going to make a, another control and I'm going to call this mid arm TTRL. Let's plug in these two X forms into here. I'm going to put this to 0.5 and we'll plug in the result into there. And I actually want to see this. So let's promote that parameter. Let's call it L mid arm TTRL. And let's actually put that T at the end there. All right, hover the, over the view purpose N. Okay, so again, it was created here, All right? So if I move this around, we can see that it's actually blending and we have control over that. But again, we're not getting the, uh, the mirror. Right? We're not getting the actual mirrored copy. And that's weird because we have this, right? That's that's correct. Um, we're grabbing this and we've renamed this over here. And if I look into um, the actual graph here, we have this mid-arm control, okay? So everything is being created, but the only problem is, is that this transform blend is going into both of these parents. So if I hover over that control, we can see that both of the controls are ending up at that position. So what we need to do is rename this as well. And now everything is exactly where it needs to be. So of course we can add a shape to this. Let's give this the shape of a rubber, press N. And of course we need to, so you see the pattern here. You, you, if you want to mirror everything, you need to have proper naming, right? But it's pretty fantastic because it's pretty simple to set up. Uh, so, right, so let's just make this red. And cool. So we can start to really think about how we can expand upon this relatively simple setup and create much more complex setups where we can actually, you know, collapse certain things down to subnets, you know, copy those things over, 
uh, it's a really flexible process, actually. So we're going to use this same approach uh, of the fuse graph to create an eye look rig for our iBot character. And we'll take care of that in the next video.